Grand Canyon, as grand as it can be. There are spirits working upon them and it's so sensitive to human presence. You know, your thoughts on extraterrestrial life and if you've been in contact with any. If you want to explore such things, recently created what's called a Sadhguru exclusive. Good luck with your um, motorcycle tour across America. Hope you means peaceful. We'll recognize you by your new red beard. <laughs> That'll happen by the time I reach it. <laughs> For the inner dimension of the human being, a thousand years ago, people had the wisdom and the strength and the determination to do this. from your perspective, what is true spirituality? Well, let me give a very technical kind of uh, answer to this, because uh, if you say anything more poetic, people will distort it again. So having said that, a technical, absolutely technical definition of spiritual process would be this. There is a physiological process which you call it the body. There is a psychological process of thought and emotion going on. If you transcend these two, if somehow your experience of life transcend these two, that an experience which is not body-based, an experience which is not of the psychological structure, if this happens, then you are spiritual because something beyond body and mind has happened. Why is it important that something beyond body and mind should happen is because both your body and mind are accumulations that you gathered and you're mistaking it for a cosmos. What you created is not the creation per se. So there is a creation, there is a force called creation which is uh, not that creation happened at some time, it's happening in a tremendous way every moment of our life. But only few people are conscious of it, rest are busy with their physiological and psychological processes. Hello? So spiritual process means something beyond body and mind became a living thing in your life, it became a living experience. Uh, just switching gears just because of the limited time we have, I… after reading Mystic's Musings, I'm very interested and curious if one, you know, your thoughts on extraterrestrial life and if you've been in contact with any. Or maybe you are one, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> maybe that is a better question <laughs> Well, I have a reputation uh, of being very logically correct, which is important in this world today, though it's quite silly and limiting. So I don't want to destroy that reputation on your show for myself, but if you want to explore such things, we have now just now recently created what's called an exclusive, Sadhguru exclusive. This is 
to explore those dimensions which don't fit into your logic. Because right now, most human beings are being constipated by their own logic. Logic is a wonderful thing to survive, to understand the physical nature. Two polarities are needed for logic, otherwise there's no logic. But there are dimensions which don't belong to these polarities. Those dimensions cannot be explored in a logical way. If you're really keen on these things, then you must come, we'll put you through the works. But if I logically answer this question, uh, that will be very cosmetic. It doesn't really get to the heart of the matter. But I'm just telling you, you are a ghost with a body. So just for your information. The moment you lose your body, everybody thinks you're a ghost <laughs>
If I'm covered with red dust, don't think I've become a red Indian. I'm still a same brown-black Indian, all right? <laughs> we'll tell, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll recognize you by your new red beard. <laughs> That'll happen by the time I reach the... Okay, okay, baby. Bye. <laughs> Bye. I'll see you. Yeah. Namaskar. Here we are at the Grand Canyon, farmed uh, over millions of years, exposing geological history of this place, which goes back to 1.8 billion years, as they estimate. It's essentially Colorado River cutting down nearly a mile into the earth. Can you imagine this? Colorado was flowing here and now it's down there, a mile down into the earth. That's a kind of change that is happening on the planet at various levels. In our little lifespan, we may not notice these things, but here is a living proof of what kind of earth moving happens over a million years or so. It's absolutely incredible, unimaginable. Grand Canyon, as grand as it can be. Let's go to Rudraksha. Oh. Just give me a small piece of rock from this formation. Pick one. Like that? That's small? Yeah, that's good. But uh, Jennifer and uh, Natalie, mm -hmm. Jennifer, leave your camera with somebody. Both of you go down there. Huh? This is rolling. Just close your eyes and see if you can take off your survive without the hats. Back to back. Close your eyes, keep your hands open and just sit down. <laughs> Can you see this? Huh? <laughs> All this time it was going round and round. Can you see this now? Initially I thought it's the rocks, but it's the very space and it's so sensitive to human presence and able to recognize certain things about what we're doing, it's quite incredible. Just natural forces. I'm sure uh, those natives who are sensitive to this dimension, would definitely 
say there are spirits working upon them, which they're not very wrong in a way, <laughs> it's, it's the spirit of the earth. They're not very wrong but not in the sense of some ghosts functioning, but there's a phenomenal amount of energy flow and well, there are many places natural features which have a certain amount of energy. But the important thing is the way it's responding to human presence. <laughs> Unbelievable. Canyon National Park towards uh, Sedona. Uh, maybe a little over two hour ride. And uh, we have uh, about three meetings with Native American people. Please uh, feel free to say whatever you wish to say about your tribe and its culture and its spirituality especially. Hopi means peaceful, peaceful and um, right now our population is probably almost 25,000 and uh, I was uh, born and raised on the Hopi reservation and when I was growing up um, I would tell myself I will never leave the Hopi reservation. <laughs> I am Havasupai, and Havasupai literally translates into the people of the blue-green waters. The people of the blue-green waters, regional for my area, were known as the guardians of the Grand Canyon. A small tribe, we number all of about 650 plus oh. people in the entire of the tribe. Okay. Though the people based in that bottom of the tri in the canyon have become carriers of the medicine of what we refer to as the master altar. The master altar simply being the Grand Canyon. <laughs> That's just a sample of how our language flows. But it's not important that we understand the exact words of what is said. It is important that with all languages of how we impart that through our oratory is what's going to be taken in by the vibrational frequency embrace of that heart that is within us. Let me hear the sounds from the bottom of the Grand Canyon. <laughs>
Hey, Fat Girl, it's me, Mike, and um, good luck with your uh, motorcycle tour across America. And I had a question to ask you. I was wondering, the year 2020, with all this, you know what I mean, diversity and division, and just all the controversy with the um, coronavirus, how do you think um, we're going to receive any peace from this um, crisis? About peace, about peace. We must understand, peace will not happen in America, Africa, India, anywhere. Peace can only happen within us. This is the only way forward for humanity. If we are expecting outside situations will be all wonderful for us, no, any time they can turn around, as you see right now, but outside situation is not the real thing. What's happening within us is the real thing. And we can ensure that what happens within us happens the way we want it. It's my wish and my blessing. You must know peace and blissfulness. Everything that's possible that we can do, we'll do it for you. You must ride with me, Mike. I'm uh, exploring spiritual America on my motorcycle. Ride with me. It's a little bulky, but I've gotten used to it. What happened? What'd you do? She fell down. She fell down. Oh my. <laughs> Here is a crater formed by a meteorite. Millions of years old. Just 150 foot. But look at the size of the crater it created. Just the velocity, what it can do. This is why I said, don't go beyond speed limit, because what velocity can do, you know? They come and work here like this, huh? Up there. Where is the scaffolding? You go there and work. See, what is that? A circle. Do you see that one? Not a This is absolutely amazing that in the middle of nowhere, they built this enormous structures all over and uh, they built roads which we are not seeing here now, 
but they build roads thirty feet wide, actually road systems up to four hundred miles, straight as an arrow. Above all, this entire labor of building this in this kind of terrain, which is even survival is very harsh out here, but look at the <laughs> where they got the masonry. In the middle of nowhere, how can you say you understand human beings? <laughs> this is what they do. So right now we are here in this place which is called as Pablo Bonito. Twelve mile long and a mile wide, Chaco Canyon was a major center of flourishing civilization between 980 and 1280. What you see here is just a little bit of what's remaining. This was not necessarily largely a residential complex, this was more a ritual practice this is more a religious complex or a spiritual complex or an occult complex. You must understand this, 250 years and a humongous amount of labor of cutting stone, building this, carrying the timber, bringing it here, creating water places, <laughs> all this for the inner dimension of the human being. A thousand years ago, people had the wisdom and the strength and the determination to do this. Well, these are the kivas that we are seeing here. Mm, these are round structures of different sizes, some of them large enough to hold four hundred people for a ceremony or a ritual. Some restoration work has been done, but still this is the original design, unbelievable. Whenever we build anything meditative, we always uh, want to go into the earth and uh, initially I will say twelve feet, then our uh, architects will come and present their problems and say six feet, then our uh, construction team will come and present more problems of drainage and ventilation, then we will settle for four, four and a half feet. All our meditation halls <laughs> are about four to four and a half feet below the earth. But uh, here are more courageous people, thousand years ago <laughs> When we were in Grand Canyon, uh, we saw one thing. Just with human presence, with a certain level of awareness, suddenly uh, a certain movement of energy, north-south alignment was happening. I'm just wondering, either by observation they arrived at it or by their own energies they arrived at it. We can check it out right now, somebody give me either a copper chain or a rudraksh. Yeah. This is also too heavy, there's mercury in this. See, this is a very heavy pendant, loaded, loaded with solidified mercury, very heavy. And look at the way you're going. Hmm? Please mark a line along this, somebody. What is this guy? This is how he goes straight on the motorcycle. Hmm? <laughs> See? Hmm? You want to sit here, somebody? Yeah. Yes. 
Both of you sit back to back, let me see. Right there. The same direction. Close your eyes. Watch this, huh? Can you see this? <laughs> the wind is still blowing this way, it's going against the wind. Block your right nostril. Oh my god, look at this. Well, of course, uh, people will say it is the wind, but if wind moved it, it should be moving it this way. This is where the wind is blowing, but it's moving this way. So it should have been very easy to arrive at the alignment here <laughs> for some reason, I don't know why. <laughs> Are you ready for the immurement? Hello? <laughs> Come on, get up now. Why the shift in direction is okay? Up or down? Up or down? Up or down? That's how it is. <laughs>